Muslims have to not just reclaim Islam, they have to reclaim their self-confidence. When Islam spread in the early centuries, the reason why it was such a dynamic, interactive force, in addition to talking about God's guidance in terms of Islam spreading, was that Muslims were self-confident. They felt that they were in control, so when they engaged other cultures and civilizations, they could interact and dialogue and borrow freely. There wasn't the concern of losing one's identity, of being co-opted, of being overpowered. Now, it's not to say that Muslims don't have a problem at times in some societies with the issue of being overwhelmed in terms of cultural penetration, etc. But in many other parts of the world, and in many situations, Muslims are a lot more established, empowered, than they allow themselves to be. Empowerment is very much something that is necessary in self-confidence. The danger with simply repeating the past and remembering the past, if you're not careful, is that you tend then to live in the past and not say, this is what the past was about, what can we learn from it? Thank God we're in a position to move beyond it. How do we build on that? Otherwise, we're still fighting the battles of the past and we're still feeling that we're not empowered, for example. When Italian Catholics came to the United States, they were a minority, religiously and ethnically. They were not accepted by the dominant group. They could not get into the best schools and universities. When my father went for a job in New York, it said blacks, Jews, and Italians need not apply. The community was faced with empowering itself. It had to think about how do we as a minority community, raise our children in this majority community, educate them in a way in which they will not simply be overwhelmed by that majority experience. How do we, as a disenfranchised minority community, move into the positions of, if you will, power and authority within the society? So Muslims are very much there. They're in our universities, they're in our jobs, they're in our society. But the challenge of the Muslim community is where do you go from here? How do you marshal those resources to engage in institution building? So what do I mean by institutions? I mean institutions that represent Muslim concerns. Muslims need institutions in Washington and nationally that deal with issues like public affairs, the media, political lobbying, etc. So that people have a sense of the significance of the number of Muslims. Otherwise, it's as if the Muslim community is in a closet. Nobody knows they're there. If you are visible, that's what makes people in Washington listen to you. And only that. If you are a visible community, that's what makes the media respond. You call up the media and say, I found what you said about Islam offensive. I saw JAG last night and I didn't like it. They don't care. But you let them know that you're a significant number of people, then they do care. But that kind of monitoring of the media and responding that kind of monitoring of the political system and responding can only come when you build institutions. The second thing is to train the next generation to move into the professions that allow for this kind of access. And that's happening. We see Muslims in the legal profession, medical profession, but it's going to become more and more important to see Muslims in politics, to see Muslims in communications, mobilizing and getting beyond that, developing a community that has more cohesion. So that when one faces the kind of religious questions that one has to face in terms of the adaptation, if you will, an encounter of Islam with the American scene, you actually have Muslims who not only know their Islam, but know America. Too often you have some who know Islam, but don't know America very well, who just come over here. You have those that know America, but don't know Islam very well. Now, don't be offended when I say don't know Islam very well. What I mean is that one can know Islam devotionally, but not know it in terms of the kind of intellectual resources that one needs for interpretation. I like to say that Muslims, Jews, and Christians have shared an experience as they adapt to America, and, and even internationally. You move into, the, into modern education, and what happens is people get, grow up and get an education university level. But for many, their religious knowledge stays at the same level that they had as children. You know, so they become, if you will, PhD physicists, but their knowledge of Islam is still here 
in terms of their knowledge of Sharia, their knowledge of Islamic history, their knowledge of etc. And unless one really understands the realities of one's faith and history, and it's tremendous, the tremendous dynamism of Islam, and how that dynamic played out, how Islam both pres preserved its essentials, but also was dynamic enough to interact with other cultures, to transform them, to borrow from them, etc., one cannot move forward. And what Muslims need to do is to develop critical masses of Muslims who are trained to have an impact in different areas that are important to the Muslim community. And for those critical masses to actually create a vision and then do something about it. We developed this phrase of the couch potato, people who sit and watch sports but don't engage in it. So they sit there and get heavier and heavier as they watch football and say, my God, I love sports, you know? Because I speak to groups, I also do a lot of talks for Muslim fundraisers, in which, in which I'm doing the, the talk, the non-Muslim. This is what it is. We get together and we talk about the problem of Islam globally. And we talk about Palestine. We talk about Kashmir. We talk about Bosnia. We talk about American neo-colonialism. We talk about the American double standard. We talk about Muslim bashing. And we are upset. And the Muslim community is going to change this. We feel good. We identified the problems. We showed that we know what they are. And we can really get upset about them. The more upset you get is the more sincere you are. You know? But remember, what the couch potato can't do, you can't reach for your wallet. You can't go for the wallet, take out of the wallet what you need to support in order to develop the institutions and do the institution building. You get emails and letters, dear Professor Esposito, thank you for speaking out in the media. Thank you for writing that op-ed piece. You really need to do more. <laughs> dear Professor Esposito, thank you for creating this, this center in Washington, which has such and such an impact, and you're all over the world. I wish you would create a few more positions for Muslim scholars and get the funding for them. The challenge of the community then is to develop the vision, you've got the resources, and to support that vision.